Today on Getting to Hired, we have the founder of Vets to PM talking about how project management is going to work for you. Coming right up. Hi, my name is Tony Morrow, and this is Getting to Hired, the show that is helping you, the military member, transition successfully into your civilian career. Today, I am joined by the founder of Vets to PM. This is Eric Wright. Eric Wright, the, the PhD, the PMP, the founder of not only Vets to PM, but something called Vetstone, and we're going to touch on that in just a minute. But Eric, I want to welcome you to Getting to Hired. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks, Tony. Absolutely excited to be here. And uh, that's tough to follow that intro rap, man. That was awesome. Uh, well, thank you for being humble. But let me tell you, uh, folks, when we get into this, you're going to see why uh, uh, Eric is is really helping us as a community. Uh, and also, he is a vet himself. Uh, so, yeah, what he does is, is really good. So let's get into it. Um, uh, in a previous episode, we had Larry, um, who is working uh, with you for Vets to PM Canada. But Vets to PM is an American... Uh, origin uh, originated company, and you are its founder. So, can you tell us about Vets to PM? Uh, what kind of what's the origin story behind it? What motivated you to get this going, and uh, and and what are you doing with it today? Yeah, so uh, great place to start. So, uh, you know, when I transitioned, so I'm dual era. Uh, I was Navy first. I was uh, uh, Army Guard second. So I've worn two uniforms. I was uh, Gulf War for us down here. Uh, in the 90s, and then I was post 11, uh, 9 11. Uh, and so when I transitioned out, you know, I mean, I had this great skill set. Uh, I was a whole technician, I was a pipe fitter, I welded on uh, nuclear submarines. And uh, when I transitioned out, there's no nuclear powered boats in the civilian fleet. <laughs> so I had this great skill set and nowhere to uh, apply it. So uh, I kind of wandered around in the job desert, Tony. I was, uh, you know, banging around, making 25, 35,000 a year, and, uh, uh, you know, chasing degrees. Uh, you know, I'd go get a, this degree and they'd say, oh, yeah, so I'm sorry, psychology. Yeah, you can't be a psychologist unless you have like a PhD and a, uh, and a, and a, and a license. So, yeah, that degree's not going to help you much. So you need another degree. Uh, and I was listening to folks, I thought, you know, who were the experts, right? It's their job to be guidance counselors and stuff. So I took guidance. And uh, so anyway, long story short, I wandered around what I call the job desert for 12 years. Uh, and the primary reason, Tony, is because I didn't know what I didn't know. I talked in leadership, uh, the cult we were raised in in the military, uh, and, and I didn't translate it for civilians. So when I talk leadership, they want to talk management, and, the, and, and we were talking right past each other. Uh, so, you know, 12 years later, I end up at university. I end up at Department of Defense, our Department of Defense down here in the States, um, and I get put on a project. And I was like, whoa, this is fantastic. It feels comfortable. I'm pretty good at it. This is great. My team is responding well. I'm responding well. My boss is giving me high marks. This is fantastic. And my boss said, yeah, man, you're really good at this project management thing, kid. And I was like, whoa, it's a thing. Uh, the rest is history, man. The rest is history. Project management is the, uh, for me, it's the professional land of milk and honey, man. I came out of the desert and I brought with me what I call the vet stone. Um, and that's what I do now for a living. I show military veterans and transitioning active duty members what they don't know they don't know. Hey, look, here's project management. Here's what it is. Here's why you need to do it. Boom. And I show them a four-step plan and the rest is history. And that's key. You you identified this this thing that well, we don't know what we don't know. And uh, that's, I mean, in the military, when we come out, we're in such a bubble, uh, our own little headspace when it comes to like military think and and, and how we view the world. And so, so as you say, like it, it took you 12 years to, to go through this job desert to figure out, you know, kind of the civilian equivalent of, of what you just kind of naturally fit into in your military job. So um, that's project management. Uh, but when it comes to the civilian side, like if you were to explain it to somebody, let's say a vet who, who's never heard this stuff before, what is project management and this PMP designation that, that people talk about? Right. So, man, I'm glad you asked, Tony. So, you know, I don't know what what everybody calls it, but this is basically the field manual for how to do your technical job. Right. Yeah. Cheers, brother. Boom. That's right, baby. Pembox. Pembox. That's right. So basically, it's a field manual. Hey, if you want to be an arty guy, if you want to be a combat medic, if you want to be a IT guy or gal, if you want to be a I don't know, whatever you want to do in the military, they teach you how to do it in your uh, individual training. So the civilians have a technical manual for how to do projects. It's called the uh, uh, PMBOK guide, the, the Project Management Body of Knowledge. 
the key is, is in that technical document, it provides the language of project management. The definition of a project is as follows, a temporary endeavor undertaken to produce unique good service result capability, whatever. So when the colonel says, hey, I want that piece of the battle space, or the captain says, hey, we're gonna go cut circles in this part of the ocean to provide overwatch and security, whatever. Whatever the mission is, it's temporary, it's unique. If you planned it, if you resourced it, if you led it, if you documented the performance, you were doing projects because it's the very same definition in the tech manual. So the trick is, Talk about what you've done, but talk about it in the codified language that civilians do understand, which is project manager. When I say, hey, I'm a vet, they say, oh, my sister got her veterinary degree from the University of New Mexico. Oh, That's oh fantastic. <laughs> so, so, so now, instead of talking in vet and hoping that the civilian understands what we're saying, we can just talk like project managers and they're like, oh, I know exactly what you do for a living. I know how to hire you, place you, how much to pay you, how to develop you. And, and that's really the trick is talking about what we've always done. Lead small, high-performing teams to accomplish objectives to standard, uh, but talk about it like they talk about it, and uh, they, you're recognizable to them now. Anyway, it's, so that's, that's what the PMP really does is it legitimizes that experience uh, and, and says to them, hey, look, I know how to spell project management and I know how to do project management because one of the governing bodies that is in charge of that whole discipline said so. Whether it's SMESC format, small party tasking, operational planning process, all these kinds of terms that we come become familiar with in the military, that, as you just described, that is, those are projects, and you've been practicing project management just in with a different lingo, uh, language. Um, and using our lingo, this PMBOK is like an SOP on yes. how to deal with, refer to, speak uh, terminology-wise with regards to project management from a civilian perspective. So that's that's amazing. So we've identified that we as military members, we have this exposure and experience to project management just inherently because of our military training and what we've done. But what is the the value? I mean, if we already have that experience, what's the value of having a PMP designation? Um, like, what does that do for us? Right, great question, man. So, so here's the key. So if the trick is, hey, I've done it, now I just need to learn how to talk about it in the language civilians understand. Okay, so that is project management, but but that still doesn't it, it doesn't legitimize or convey to the civilian that we have a command of our discipline, of our technical manual. So when we show the civilian a two, three, four page resume chock full of projects, it's like, hey, this is great, but are you making this up? Or like, how do I know this is legit? So when they see the PMP, what they know is, hey, one of the major governing bodies on the planet that's responsible for this profession has said, we looked at a minimum of 4,500 hours over a protracted period of time. And we say that you're a project manager and you can sit for the exam. So when the civilian hiring manager sees PMP on our resume, Tony, it legitimizes that entire resume because it looks like a project manager. It sounds like a project manager. And then we, we speak and quack like a project manager. They hire us as project managers because they saw the PMP. You might say you're trade qualified. Yes. Yep. So um, I'm sure in the, Ameri uh, in the U.S. military, there are the equivalent versions of this. But whether it's a QL5 or QL6 or um, a certain uh, qualification, uh, NOPQ for the Navy um, or command qualification, the, the, these are designations within the military that, that recognize, that are official recognition that you have passed a certain bar and that you can then apply that skill set in a military context. This PMP designation, a civilian recognition that you meet the bar, you meet the standard, and that you could then apply that and show that to everybody else. Like the rank on your shoulder, um, these are letters behind your name that that communicate to the civilian world that you have this skill set that can be readily deployed or applied in the work environment that you're going to be employed in. Um, so we've uh, we've assessed that PM, uh, a, a PMP designation is something we want. How does Vets to PM help us get it? Um, it easy peasy, uh, four steps. So the first step is once the, the the active member or the military veteran realizes, hey, wow, I, I have project management experience. I could do this uh, in a meaningful, lucrative career as a civilian. 
Uh, once they have that awareness, the, the first step is let's uh, uh, get your experience translated onto the PMP application because without that application, you can't sit for the exam. So, you know, after working with thousands of veterans over, over the last, you know, decade or so um, as a professor uh, and as a career counselor and now as a, uh, you know, business owner at Vets to PM and Vetstone, what I commonly hear is, hey, Eric, I don't know how to translate. I don't know how to learn that new language. So I created a piece of software that you just bang your military experience into the front right off your uh, performance evaluations, your fit reps, and out the other side. Uh, it spits out a report that's a civilian project manager. It's the commercialized version of you. So instead of doing projects in defense, here's what you look like as a civilian. That's step one, complete that PMP application. Step two, pin on that PMP. Vets to PM, for those vets that need it, uh, Vets to PM Canada provides the PMI required 35 hours of training to get you to pass that exam. We've got a 92% pass rate first time go, 100% pass rate second time go. So we help you pin that PMP. Okay, great. Now you got a PMP on. Uh, what about getting a job? Well, we don't leave you in a lurch, right? That's where a lot of companies stop short. Hey, cool. You got your PMP. Good luck, brother. Let me know how that goes. Okay. So we write you a two-page executive resume. Uh, we spit and polish you up. We give you a four-hour interview skills workshop because I work with veterans all the time. Like, hey, man, I've never had to do an interview. I just did promotion boards. I'm not, I don't know. I have any idea how to do this. So step three is, uh, so first step, translate, uh, uh, fill out the application. Step two, pin the PMP. Step three, get that resume, uh, get ready for that interview. We show you how to do a LinkedIn profile. We show you how to use LinkedIn. We uh, give you a four hour interview skills workshop. And then Tony, the best part, man, and this is for any veteran, if they've even got PMP already pinned on, we do lifetime job placement assistance in the PM field. Um, and really that's the mission at Vets to PM. We help military members become project managers, period. If it fits under that umbrella, we do it. If it doesn't fit on that umbrella, we don't do it. We connect you with folks who do what else ever you want to do. So uh, that's really how easy it is. It's a full service development stack, I call it, if we're talking, you know, tech and IT and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it's the program that I wish I would have had when I transitioned out. Now, I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, but it wouldn't have taken me 12 years if somebody said, hey, right, can you read? I can read. Follow this plan, dude. You'll be all right. <clears throat> So um, one of the biggest challenges a lot of us military folks have when we come out is we have all this drive, we have all this passion, we have all this energy, and we have all this uh, like applied skill to be able to direct in something focused. But we need to be able to have that um, – someone to chart that course for us so that we can focus that energy and that um, – that, that, um, uh, that military mindset of ours on the task at hand. Um, and that's what this thing does uh, as far as Vets to PM Canada or Vets to PM in the States. You're providing us the direction, the, the plan to be able to focus our energies, to be able to uh, execute and accomplish the, the, the objectives that we want to, in this case, for example, getting your PMP qualification and translating that into a job, a rewarding career after, uh, after you've got this designation. So that's huge. Um, and uh, we talked about, uh, you know, uh, PMP being this civilian SOP and, and vernacular on, on how to speak about a lot of the skill sets we have in the military. But you touched on the Vetstone software piece. Uh, I just want to take a moment to re-emphasize that Vetstone uh, software piece that it's unique to Vets to PM. You're not going to find that anywhere else. And it helps you in a no BS way translate your military experience into uh, civilian equivalencies or applications so that you can qualify for uh, writing this exam, correct? Yeah, that's right, uh, Tony. And it, it's it's the culmination of working with thousands and thousands of veterans um, and, and thousands and thousands of accepted applications at PMI. Um, we took uh, this thing as AI, it's artificial intelligence, it's machine, it's supervised machine learning. I train this thing as we go. Uh, it What it does is it takes, hey, I'm an RD officer. I punch in all my RD experience. It crunches that against the hundreds and hundreds of other RD officers that are in that da uh, in its database. And then it maps that uh, uh, executive skill set to the PMI language codified in the PMBOK, right? And then it spits out a legitimized commercial version of you, uh, arty guy, as a PM guy or gal. And now you just 
you cut and paste it, man. It's a report, Tony. You cut and paste it right into your PMP application, right into your LinkedIn profile, and right into your resume. And and it's agnostic. I don't I don't care where the service member gets their PMP or the veteran gets their PMP. That's not the point. The mission is help them get a meaningful, lucrative career, not just a piece of paper, right? Can help them get that paycheck. So. Vetstone is usable by any veteran. And even if you don't want to grow up and be a project manager, I mean, I can't fathom why you wouldn't want to, but you might not want to. You might want to do finance or HR or accounting. I mean, you know, whatever. You still are going to have to, at some point in your second career, do projects. You're either going to work on them as a SME or you're going to run them because they're in your unit uh, or in your business line, let's say. So you might as well put that differentiating skill set of, hey, by the way, boss, I can do projects if you need me to. Uh, and it just sets you apart. So, so I would encourage, uh, you know, any of your viewers, I mean, it, it, regardless of what you want to do when you grow up, at least plug your stuff into Vetstone, find out what value you bring as a commercialized project manager, and, and you never know what will help somebody connect with you on the resume. It's, um, it's a no, like it's a, it's a no brainer when you describe it because, uh, there's no, there's no creative process here. There's no like over analytical thinking it's a checklist process. Stick in your experience as you've had it, and it will give you the result. Um, I, I mean, it, it just sounds phenomenal. Vetstone, the software piece, vets to PM. That's where you're going to find it. So um, if you are trying to do this on your own, so you've heard this story. You've, 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 you know, you've, you've seen our episode where, you, where we talked to Larry. You're hearing this episode where we're talking to Eric, and you think, oh, you know, PMP is great, but, you know, I don't want to go through this vets to PM uh, process. I'm just going to do it on my own. What is the distinct advantage that Vets to PM gives us? You've talked about, you know, the the curriculum. We have like you have a, a boot camp course that you provide folks to be able to give them uh, like coursework that helps prep them for the exam. You help translate their work experience into the the loggable hours. That's 3,500 if you have a degree, 7,500 if you don't. Um, so you're able to log those hours and identify that in advance using your, uh, using your curriculum and your software. Uh, you provide support after, um, uh, after the exam's written to be able to punch up that resume, um, help you through job interviews, and then career counseling to be able to help you get those jobs after lifetime career support. So I'm, I'm obviously I'm answering my own question here, but um, <laughs> and you're doing a darn fine job of it too. Tony. Oh, thanks, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I like like I, I I suppose like why why wouldn't you take the vets to PM uh, coursing as you're offering it with all those benefits listed? Like essentially, what are the disadvantages of doing it on your own? You miss out on all these benefits, but. But I mean, when you went through this process, you didn't have Vets to PM before you created it. So how was that? How was that so, such a struggle for you? Well, I'll, t I'll tell you, Tony. So first of all, uh, you know, so it's forty five hundred hours if you have a degree. Sorry, brother, I just got a. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, no, pedantic. I'm a university professor. I used to be, brothers. So I gotta, you know, I just I, I catch stuff anyway. Um, the the real difference is, look, man, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of places that can help you get your PMP. Uh, you can self-study. You can go to a boot camp. You can go to university. I mean, you, there's all kinds of places to get it. I had my PMP, and then I still had the same gaps. How do I talk like a PMP? How do I get real-world experience as a PMP? What, 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 what should my salary ask be as a PMP? Uh, how do I write a resume? That's it's completely different target than get your PMP. So. Uh, the value really is the full package. Um, you know, I self-studied. Uh, and when I got my test results, brother, when it, when it popped up that I had passed, Tony, I was totally surprised. I'm like, holy cow, I better get out of here before they figure out they shouldn't let me have this piece of paper. Like, I had no idea what I had done correct to get the piece of paper. But so so my point is, is, is that, uh, you, you know, the, the training itself is, 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 you can get it anywhere, but... I think what makes Vets to PM different, what makes Vetstone different, is I spent eight years in two different uniforms. I've worked with thousands of vets. I know exactly what you're capable of. If you say, hey, Eric, I'm Artie. If you say, hey, Eric, I'm a hull technician. If you say, hey, Eric, I'm a combat medic. If you say, hey, Eric, I'm a, uh, you know, a soft guy. Or, I mean, I know exactly what you're capable of. And here's the key. I've been doing projects in the Civ Div for 20 something years. I mean, see all the gray? I mean, you know, I know exactly what they need you to look like, sound like, and act like so they can see you as a PM. So when we're giving you the training, 
We don't just stand in front of the classroom and bombard you with 5,000 questions like you're going to go take the test next Tuesday. We say, okay, how many of you have ever seen a warning order, a fragmentary order, an op order? Raise your hand. Oh, like, okay, every hand in the place. That's called a charter. It authorizes you to do the mission. Hey, how many of you ever uh, seen a troop to task list? Or, you know, how do you keep track of where all your personnel are at? Baby leave, school, AIT, TDY, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, it's this thing. We call it this thing and it's hanging in HQ. Great. That troop to task list, that's called a uh, human resource calendar. So we just stand in front of the class and, 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 and show you, <laughs> hey, here's what you called this thing. Here's what civilians call it. Oh, I got it. Most of our guys and gals are ready, man. Three, four weeks after they after they take the course, dude, they're pin and PMP because once that light bulb goes on, like, hey, Eric's not lying to me. I really do have experience doing this. I just got to learn the new language. Boom, man. It's it's it, you know it's downhill to the front door after that, man. So um, I, I think the sales job, so to speak, is is done. Like I I <laughs> I, I can't I cannot uh, to harp on this anymore would be like like you know. Uh, you know, hitting a dead horse or something, because because this this is a no brainer. I mean, um, we we've assessed that PMP is something as a military member you've already done. This is a civilian designation that acknowledges the experience you already have. This vets to PM program helps you navigate and get to not only getting the qualification, which you could do on your own, but helps you on the other end to be able to speak the speak, walk the walk, and help you not not handhold you exactly but certainly guide you in the right direction of getting that job um and having a sense of, of of your value in a civilian world with this designation with the experience that you have so like i say i think you know to 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 continue to harp on this is is kind of defeating uh, self-defeating because because the point's already been made but if we want to reach out to you eric and we need to be able to contact you to find out when the courses are i mean if you've seen our previous episode where we spoke to Larry at Vets Canada, uh, Vets to PM Canada, you know the dates that are coming up. And you the, the the link to the Vets to PM Canada website is in the show notes for that particular episode. Now, Eric, you are obviously uh, strongly affiliated with Vets to PM Canada. That's, you know, the expansion of your baby. But if we if people want to reach you in the United States and they want to find out more information if anything just about Vets Canada or sorry, Vets to PM and and you, how do they reach out and contact you? All right, cool. So you said several great things in there. So I'm going to give you the contact cake first, and then I'll put some some extra icing on it to answer some of the stuff that you highlighted. But awesome. Okay. So you know, I, I'm a I, I'm a big fan of keep it simple, Eric. Right. So you, stupid works too, but keep it simple, Eric. Right. I have a tendency to overcomplicate, overanalyze things. So I made it easy peasy, man. If you're in Vetstone trying to translate your stuff and you need help. Hit Eric at militaryvetstone.com. It's right there in the vetstone. You can talk to me right about your vetstone stuff. If you're doing anything else PMP related, now it's simply Eric at vets2pm.com. So if you're a military member, if you're a military vet and you want to be a project manager, boom, Eric at militaryvetstone.com uh, uh, vetstone or Eric at vets2pm.com. Done. Um, if you want to find out where the courses are and where they're going to be and what times and what bases and that kind of stuff we're doing, We've got courses in Germany coming up. We got a, we're working with Japan right now. We got a course in uh, Hawaii in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going to a course next week up in Langley. I mean, we're all over the, the globe. Uh, we're going to be in Canada all of May and June. Uh, we're hiring some Canadian instructors so we can Canadianize this thing. My, my buddy, Dwayne Cormier, uh, that's his favorite thing. He's like, hey, Eric, this best appeal thing is fantastic, brother. We got to Canadianize it. I'm like, gotcha. Uh, and that's what Larry is helping us do, right? So we've got some insiders helping us customize this thing uh, for our brothers and sisters north of the border. Uh, but but yeah, and I've got an 888-551-4251 extension three number. Uh, and you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Eric Allen Wright uh, as well. Um, uh, PM Doctor is my handle on uh, LinkedIn. So so yeah, I you know, I want your viewers to think of me as their help desk, man. If 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 they if they want to check out this PMP thing, kick that tire a little bit, man, just give me a holler that's what I do now for a living, Tony. I got the best job in the world. Every day I run back and forth, up and down a transition trail, giving people water and batteries for the flashlights and land nav maps and stuff and say, hey man, here's your left, here's your right, here's your in-state. 
want to make 95,000 a year, you want to make a buck 15 a year doing meaningful, lucrative work, brother, boom, PM's it. Here's how you get there. So I'm the PM Sherpa. So just, just have to hit me up. <laughs> the PM Sherpa. That, that, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, uh, I hope so, I didn't even reach copyrights right there. I don't know if there is a PM Sherpa, but there is now. <laughs> so, so don't worry about all those those details. If you, uh, for whatever reason, you couldn't uh, you couldn't write that down fast enough, they will all be in the show notes for this episode. Uh, whether you're watching it on YouTube or the comments of uh, of Facebook, um, I will have that in the notes there for you. So don't worry about that. Um, all right, Eric. Uh, just I guess before we let you go, is there any kind of last nugget, last piece that you want to leave us with? Um, that uh, that I haven't touched on already. No, man, you've nailed it. Uh, you, you've done a fantastic job. Uh, I appreciate what you do for our brothers and sisters. Um, and, and I would just say, you know, um, I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, Vetstone will help you at least realize what you don't know. So if, if there's one thing I could share with folks, it's, hey, we talk in leadership, civilians talk in management. Project management is a subset of both because we've done them both in uniform and in uh, you know sport coats. Learn to talk like a project manager and, and, and that's how people will see you and they'll immediately relate to you and they see a lot of value in you and they pay you a lot of money to deliver their projects. So, you know, go to Vetstone, check out what you look like as a commercial project manager and that'll open your eyes to, hey, so this is me in the new context of what I'm going to do when I get out of uniform. And brother, I mean, we've had we've had dozens and dozens of folks just that just that click in their mindset can change, can pro profoundly change their fortunes after service, man. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I mean Eric, uh, this Vets to PM uh, project that you've created, um, this this movement really uh, to be able to help military members and vets uh, tr transition successfully into their into their new career is is phenomenal. So uh, I, thank you for your service. Thank you for helping us as a community, uh, which is, of course is your community as well. But uh, thank you very much for all the help. And I encourage all of you out there to reach out to Vets to PM, if only just to find out the information. Maybe you don't want the PMP designation. That's fine. But this stuff is so easy, easily accessible and easily applicable to what you know already. Um, it's a no-brainer. So, so at the very least, reach out. Thank you so much, Eric. Appreciate you being on the show. Um, this has been Getting to Hired. Again, folks, all the information that you've seen in today's episode will be in the show notes, of the contact information, the phone numbers, the emails. That'll all be in the show notes on YouTube, in the comments for Facebook. And if you're watching this on Facebook, feel free to give us a like and follow us for future live streams as they're coming. And if you're on uh, YouTube, then please subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you can be aware of when our next episode comes up. This is Tony Morrow for Getting to Hired. Thanks for watching.